Hello everyone, this video will cover elements of architecture design. The learning objective for this video is that students should be able to describe the fundamental components of an information system, describe client-server, server-based, and mobile application architectures, and describe how cloud computing can be incorporated as a system architecture component. Let's start with some key definitions. Architecture design includes plans for how the system will be distributed across computers and what hardware and software will be used for each computer. A hardware and software specification is a document that describes the hardware and software components in detail to aid those responsible for purchasing those products. The objective of architecture design is to assign the software components of the information system to the hardware devices of the system in the most advantageous way. The major architectural components of any system are the software and the hardware. Software systems can be divided into four basic functions. Data storage, data access logic, the processing required to access the stored data, application logic, the logic documented in the DFDs, use cases, and functional requirements, and presentation logic, the display of the information to the user and the acceptance of the user's commands. Data storage is the database software that holds your company's information, such as customer information, vendor information, and so forth. The data access logic is the programming that processes your data, such as SQL statements. Data access logic is often contained in a database management system software, such as SQL Server or Microsoft Access. Application logic is the programming that you usually think of when you think about programming an app. Application logic could be written in programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, or Python. The presentation logic is how you program the user interface. There are three primary hardware components. First, client computers, which are the input-output devices employed by users. These could be PCs, laptops, handheld and mobile devices, or smartphones. Secondly, servers. These are larger multi-user computers used to store software and data. And finally, a network that connects the different computers. Your architecture design, then, is the hardware that you choose to use and how you network it together and which type of software you place on which hardware. Client-server architectures balance the processing between client devices and one or more server devices. Generally, clients are responsible for the presentation logic, and the servers are responsible for the data access logic and the data storage. Application logic location varies depending on the client-server configuration that you choose. On Titanium, I've linked to a separate video that explains the benefits of client-server architectures. There are many ways in which the application logic can be partitioned between the client side and the server side. Here's an example of a two-tiered client-server architecture. In this figure, you can see that the server handles the data storage and the data access logic, and the client handles the presentation logic and the application logic. This means that the software program resides on the computer itself. This is called a thick client setup. A thin client setup is where the application logic is shifted to the server side instead of the client side. Microsoft Office would be a system using the thick client architecture because the software itself is stored on your client computer. You don't require a connection to another server in order to be able to run that application. In a three-tiered client-server architecture, you add another server. In this case, a specialized server that handles all of the application logic. Two- and three-tiered client-server architectures are examples of n-tier client-server architecture. You can have as many tiers as you need. In this example, there's an extra specialized server that works with web-related business logic. Titanium is an example of a system that uses n-tiered client-server architecture. On your personal client device, you only see the presentation logic, that is, the HTML that displays the web page. However, all of the programming that makes Titanium work over the internet and perform all of its different functions are located on servers outside of your client device. Server-based architecture is another option. It's basically a zero-tier client-server structure in that all of the presentation logic, application logic, 
data access logic, and data storage are contained on a server outside of the terminal that you use to operate the system. One example of this is Cal State Fullerton's virtual desktop. Have you ever used this system? You can log in to use applications that you don't have on your native computer, such as SPSS, SAS, or even Visio. You simply log into the website and you're able to use a program that is completely housed on a separate virtual server. In today's world, it's also important to think about mobile applications. Architectures for mobile apps are similar to the client-server architectures that were mentioned on the previous slides. A rich client involves processing on the mobile device itself using its resources. Presentation logic, application logic, and data access logic are on the client side. A thin web-based client is where application and data access logic happen on the server side. A rich client on a mobile device is basically equivalent to a thick client in a desktop device. Have you ever noticed when using your phone or tablet that some apps you're able to use when you're not connected to the internet? All of the programming resides right there on your phone. However, you might have noticed some other apps where you have to be connected to the internet for the application to even work at all. These are thin web-based clients. Another type of mobile application architecture is a rich internet application. These are browser-based and use some technologies on a client device to provide a rich user interface. For example, Adobe Flash. Rich internet applications are rapidly declining in popularity and use. Most apps today are either rich clients or thin web-based clients. A native app is an app written to run on a specific device with a specific operating system, such as Android or iPhone. A cross-platform framework is developed in web-based technologies such as HTML5 and uses that framework to deploy to multiple devices. A mobile web app is browser-based and platform-independent, and it has the most limited user experience. Here are some examples of mobile apps. Walgreens mobile web app is shown on the left. This is what you see when you access Walgreens website from your mobile phone's web browser. You'll notice that the mobile web app looks very similar to Walgreens cross-platform app. The cross-platform app is built using browser-based technologies such as HTML5 and, and JavaScript. Advances in hardware, software, and networking have given rise to a number of new architecture options, including virtualization, the creation of a virtual device or resource, and cloud computing, which is computing resources obtained as a service. Server virtualization involves partitioning a physical server into smaller virtual servers. You might only have one physical computer server that is running several virtual machines on it with different types of operating systems. Further, you can have storage virtuali virtualization, which involves combining multiple network storage devices into what appears to be a single storage unit. Another advance that is becoming more popular is cloud computing. Any hardware and software can be delivered as a service wherever and whenever needed. This includes everything from computing power to computing infrastructure, applications, business processes, and even, no and even personal collaboration. The cloud can be defined as the set of hardware networks, storage devices, and interfaces that combine to deliver aspects of computing as a service. Essentially, cloud computing is similar to software as a service. Instead of having the physical hardware or software housed in your organization, you pay to use hardware or software that is housed somewhere else and you access it over a network such as the internet. QuickBooks Online is an example of a move toward cloud computing. Another example of cloud computing is using Dropbox to save or back up your files. Cloud computing has several advantages. The resources allocated can be increased or decreased quickly based on demand. If you use Dropbox, you've probably seen that there are different levels of service to give you different amounts of storage. Cloud customers can obtain cloud resources in a straightforward fashion. They're easy to understand and purchase from the vendor. Cloud services typically have standardized APIs or application program interfaces, and customers are billed for resources as they are used. How you choose to design your architecture depends on your system requirements. We'll discuss this more in the next video.